Hey guys, and welcome to JP Academia. In this video lecture, uh, I will discuss vectors. And this is the outline of this uh, lecture. I will start by discussing first uh, what is a scalar quantity uh, against the vector quantity definition. Then we'll discuss components of a vector, vector addition, uh, unit vectors, dot product, and cross product. Let's start. In discussing vectors, we should start first by differentiating scalar quantity to vector quantity. So a scalar quantity or just a scalar is described by the magnitude only or it's just a single number. While when you say vector quantity, this mainly composed of a magnitude number and its direction. Uh, for the case of scalar, it does not require any direction to understand what it needs. Examples uh, of scalar quantity are the following physical quantities such as length, time, temperature, mass, and density. On the other hand, for the case of uh, vectors, uh, we have the following examples. We have here displacement, velocity, acceleration, momentum, and force. Now let us have this displacement vector as an example for us to understand how vectors are added. For example, we have a person named PJ, and he starts at point A, as shown here, and walks to point B. Maybe uh, we have a distance of 3 meters, as seen in this figure, and we define it as vector A. So vector A here is expressed or is written with an arrow above the letter. Next, uh, PJ walks about 4 meters from point B to point C wherein the displacement vector is written as B, or vector B. PJ, this person, uh, could also go from the starting point A going to point C. And uh, this can be done directly with this displacement uh, vector represented by vector C. Thus, uh, we can write uh, the vector C, which is equal to vector A plus vector B. By measuring the magnitude or the length of vector C, one can get C is equal to 6 meters and not 7 meters as you would, uh, you would get by doing simple addition. Therefore, one must take into account the directions when working with vectors. Another thing to note here is that the order in which vectors are added does not matter if you want to get the resultant vector. So we have here A plus B, which is equal to B plus A. We can add vectors graphically, but we will use trigonometry for a more accurate result. We do this by first understanding on how to get the components of a vector. Let's say I have this vector. So this is vector A uh, with this components. So com the component along the X or the horizontal. So this refers to A sub X. And this is just the shadow cast by my vector A along the horizontal. Then we have it, this component along the vertical or the Y component, A sub Y. This is just the shadow cast by my vector along the Y axis. Then uh, this can also be written or expressed as shown here below. We also have here the angles theta and the angle phi, which we will define later. If we have this a sub x and a sub y, which are the x and the y components of vector a, then we can write the magnitude of vector a, which is equal to this equation. So this is the magnitude, and this is based on the Pythagorean theorem, given this right triangle here. We can also get the angle theta using this expression below, or your angle theta is equal to the tangent inverse of a sub y over a sub x. Now, after learning how to get uh, components of a vector, we can use that method to do vector addition. So let us say we have these two vectors here. Uh, I have your vector a and we have here uh, vector b with components along the x and the y axis as illustrated here in my drawing. Then we can get this resultant vector r, which is equal to vector a 
plus vector b as follows. We can get first the, the sum of the components along the x. Uh, so that's a sub x plus b sub x to get the x component of our resultant vector or sub x. Then we can sum also the components along the y. So that's a sub y plus b sub y to get the y component of our resultant vector r. So that's r sub y. Uh, then the next step is to get the magnitude of our resultant vector using this components r sub x and r sub y using this expression. Lastly, we can also get the uh, expression for theta or the angle of our resultant vector with respect to the horizontal as follows. So we can get your theta which is equal to the tangent inverse of r sub y over r sub x. Given that direction and components are important when we're talking about vectors, it is important for us to discuss unit vector. In using the Cartesian coordinates, we can express the components of a vector using unit vectors as shown here at the left. All of these have a magnitude of 1 and pointing on the respective axis. So we have here i hat along the x-axis, j-hat along the y-axis, then we have the k-hat along the z-axis. Lastly, uh, we can express also the resultant vector r using its components expressed in terms of the unit vectors along the x, along the y, and along the z. Two types of vector multiplication will be defined in this video lecture. First, we have scalar product, also known as dot product. It is expressed mathematically as shown. So we have here vector A dot with vector B is equal to the magnitude of A, magnitude of B, times cosine phi. We're in the angle phi here is the angle between vector A and vector B. And uh, geometrically, we can think of A dot B as the product of the projection of vector B, so this one, on A, which refers to this uh, part here. So this is B cosine phi. And uh, this is the product of B cosine phi with the magnitude of A. And we can also view this dot product as the projection of vector A on B as illustrated here. So that's A cosine phi with the magnitude of B. So next, uh, we can apply the scalar product operation to unit vectors as shown. If we have a dot product of the same unit vector, so let's say i hat to i hat, j hat dot with j hat, k hat dot with k hat, uh, it will result to a value of 1, shown here, given that the magnitude uh, of this unit vectors is just unity or 1, and the value of phi here, or the angle between these two unit vectors, is equal to 0. So cosine 0 is just 1. Then for the case of orthogonal unit vectors, such as i hat dot with your j hat, i hat dot with your k hat, or j dot with your k hat, it will result to 0, given that cosine 19, uh, 90 here, the angle between these two, is equal to 0. Thus, we can obtain this useful expression for vector a, dot with vector b, which is just equal to this quantity. So we have here the components of our uh, two vectors. And this is just equal to a sub x, b sub x, plus a sub y, b sub y, plus a sub z, b sub z. Or this is just the multiplication of the values of the components. So second type of vector multiplication is the vector product, also called the cross product. It is defined as follows. We have your vector A cross with your vector B. Uh, this is equal to vector C. We're in the magnitude of the vector C is expressed as the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B sine phi. Note that the angle phi here is the angle between vector A and vector B as illustrated at the left. The direction of vector C or this uh, vector here, the, the one in red, uh, can be determined using the right-hand rule as illustrated. Or, you know, just curl your fingers from the direction of vector A 
then uh, going to vector B or you have this counterclockwise direction, your thumb now should be pointing to the direction of the vector C. It is also useful to get the cross product of the unit vectors. Getting the product of the same unit vector uh, results to zero. Uh, given that sine zero or the angle between these two uh, unit vectors is just zero. Then uh, getting the cross product of the perpendicular unit vectors as shown here results into another unit vector following the right hand rule of course. Uh, we can illustrate that using this drawing at the right. So we have here I, uh, I hat, so this, this one, cross with your uh, J hat. So crossing that one gives us K hat. Or we can also do this one with this uh, unit vector. So we have here negative J hat cross with your uh, I hat using the right hand rule or just curl your fingers uh, from J, negative J hat going to I hat and we have here the direction of the K hat. So following that uh, rule, we can also get the following expression. Using those relations, we can get the vector C equal to the cross product of A or vector A with vector B in terms of the components as expressed here. For those of you familiar with basic uh, linear algebra, we can also express this as a determinant as shown. Following the pattern in getting the determinant, we can get the same expression above. So we have here uh, for the x component, so we have uh, ay times bz shown minus az times by, so that's the x component. Then for the j hat uh, or the y component, we have a sub z bx minus ax bz. Then you will have this uh, y component. For the last component, the z component, we have here ax times by minus uh, ay bx. And then you will have your z component. And that's it for this video lecture. Hi, if you have learned something in this video and you like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, JT Academia. See you in the next video.